Animal agriculture is a nearly $6 billion industry in North Carolina. Do you use antibiotics on your animals? Yes, ma'am, I do. Livestock and poultry growers say they need them. We use the antibiotics we need to keep our animals healthy. Healthy animals make for a more cost-efficient farm. The consumer in the United States demands cheap food. But an increasing number of consumers is also demanding antibiotic-free food. The people that I market to is that's a, one of the first questions they ask, do we use any antibiotics? But our state's agriculture industry says there's no risk to people who eat meat once treated with antibiotics. The food we produce is safe and nutritious. But is the use of antibiotics on farm animals breeding antibiotic-resistant superbugs that can infect us? Some of which, frankly, are resistant to all known antibiotics. While some blame doctors for over-prescribing antibiotics, others say the use of antibiotics on farm animals is also a factor. And so it's really only a matter of time, I think, before we see really um, uh, unfortunate um, and severe disease coming from that kind of situation. Animal agriculture is big business in North Carolina. We rank second in the nation in hog and turkey production, and we raise chickens, cattle, and other animals for meat. But there is increasing concern over the use of antibiotics on those animals. Some researchers believe it's helping breed antibiotic-resistant bacteria that can cause dangerous infections in humans. We begin with a look at how antibiotics are used on our state's farms and why. Everything has to be washed down with soap, go back and disinfect it, and disinfect it again. Nell West raises turkeys for Butterball. What is the biggest threat to the turkeys? I'd say most everything. It's just like a newborn child. You have to be precautious with everything that you do. And there's no such thing as being over precautious. West raises newborn turkeys 54,000 at a time. She keeps them for five or six weeks before they're transferred to another grower. Have you had any problems with diseases on your farm? No, ma'am. It's all about prevention. Visitors are not allowed in because they might carry bacteria that could cause disease. West made an exception for us, but the tires of our car were clean before we could enter the farm. And before our cameraman and I could enter a turkey house, we had to shower and put on sterilized clothing supplied by the farm. We had to cover our head, wear plastic gloves and booties, and we had to dip those booties in disinfectant. If you do what you're supposed to do, you don't have a problem at the end. These turkey houses are cleaned and disinfected after each batch of turkeys are moved out. And the floors and water lines are tested for bacteria. Do you use antibiotics on your animals? Yes, ma'am, I do. Part of the reason is because infections can spread fast among animals in close confinement. That's some of it, but that's not all of it. You got to think about the end product. You don't want to make nobody sick. Sick from bacteria that could be in the turkey. So Nell keeps an eye out for sick birds. You look at your children every day, you look at your birds every day. Now you're looking at more than 18,000 turkeys at once. How can you single out that one is sick? What the sound he makes. He will let you know. When the bird feels good, you see how he's got his, his little wings splattered out? Right. His little tail feathers up, that's a sign he feels good. If he doesn't feel good, he's going to be kind of down, his head's going to be drooped, and you can tell from their eyes. Nell says sick birds go to the Butterball lab for testing. If it's a bacterial infection, we would treat them with antibiotics. Antibiotics like penicillin and tetracycline. So the same ones that, that we would go to the drugstore and get, you give to the birds. Correct. The antibiotics are administered through water and feed instead of injections. It would be time consuming and it would be very stressful for the birds. As you can imagine, you, you, you know, corralling them and picking each one up individually, it'd be very stressful for them. Whitley Stevenson has 12,000 sows. He raises pigs from birth to three weeks old. Just like on Nell West's turkey farm, disease prevention is important. We go to 
considerable effort to stop something from coming in. Visitors are not allowed in and Stevenson would not allow us to go inside his hog houses. All of our employees shower in when they come to work in the morning and they shower out when they leave. Stevenson says he only gives antibiotics to sick pigs that need them. By treating individual animals for individual symptoms rather than blanket treatments, um, our antibiotic uses is limited. But Stevenson says it's also important to keep his animals healthy. You know, when the herds are not healthy, the numbers drop significantly. Certainly, a healthy herd produces more pork on less land um, than we could otherwise. Johnny Rogers raises about 200 head of cattle on about 550 acres of pasture. We use the antibiotics we need to keep our animals healthy. Uh, we want to take the best care possible of our animals. We mainly use it just when animals become ill. And I do know some livestock operations that do use that to actually prevent disease. And I do think it's warranted in some situations. All beef producers are like me. They're concerned about their animals. They want what's best for their animals. And they're going to go to great lengths to keep their animals healthy because a healthy animal is productive for them and it provides um, a nutritious, safe, uh, great tasting product for the American consumer. But are the antibiotics used to keep animals healthy helping breed dangerous bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics? The resistance that we see increasing it is literally everywhere. Our environment is full of bacteria. Some of it lives on us and in us and is even good for us. Other types can harm us by causing infections. If those kinds of bacteria are exposed to antibiotics long enough, they become resistant to those antibiotics. Some say the use of antibiotics on farm animals is helping breed those superbugs. In Washington, D.C. and New York City, some big-time advocacy groups are fighting the use of antibiotics on farm animals. They include the Natural Resources Defense Council, the Center for Science and the Public Interest, the Food Animal Concerns Trust, the Union of Concerned Scientists, and Public Citizen. I'm testing local grocery store meats for antibiotics. And then there's 12-year-old Chad Campbell. He's a student at Topsail Middle School in Hampstead, North Carolina. His sixth grade science project has raised some eyebrows. In fact, it won a first place prize in the 2011 North Carolina State Science and Engineering Fair. Chad collected beef from 20 local grocery stores and tested it for antibiotics. If it's positive, it would stay purple, which is original color and um, that means that there's inhibited growth and there are antibiotics present. His results have gotten Campbell national attention. My findings were that 15% of the meat I tested had antibiotics. Chad believes antibiotics in meat are contributing to antibiotic resistant bacteria that can infect humans. And having antibiotic resistant bacteria means it's basically just about untreatable. There is no question antibiotic resistance is increasing. The resistance that we see increasing it is literally everywhere. So every kind of antibiotic um, that, that you can think of and, and essentially every kind of bacterium that causes disease is showing this increased resistance. Becky Buchanan has cystic fibrosis. It's being made worse by a bacterial infection in her lungs. It's very difficult to treat. They've tried all different kinds of antibiotics. It's very resistant to, you know, your normal antibiotics like um, your penicillins, your moxicillins. That kind of antibiotic resistance is becoming increasingly common in hospitals. About 50 to 70 percent of patients coming into the hospital emergency room with no exposure uh, to health care or acquiring staff in the hospital are now resistant to a whole class of antibiotics. The problem is compounded by a lack of new antibiotics. Weber says it's hard for drug companies to make a profit off of a drug someone only takes for 10 days versus a drug someone takes the rest of their life. No matter how much you charge, uh, you're not going to make back a multi-hundred million dollar investment. So why are more bugs resistant to traditional antibiotics? There's no question that it's the use and overuse of antibiotics that are driving the resistance. Overuse by doctors and some say overuse by farmers too. 
some of whom use antibiotics to prevent disease rather than treat it. Antibiotics are used at so-called sub-therapeutic doses or below the dose that would really be required to, to cure an infection. Um, but those antibiotics nevertheless clearly um, lead to the development of resistance in farm animals. Um, and there's some evidence now that those very bacteria that live on our farms and in our farm animals um, can be passed to humans as, as well. A study by the Union of Concerned Scientists found 70 percent of antibiotics used in the United States are fed to healthy livestock, with 14 percent more used to treat sick animals and only 16 percent being prescribed to humans. Randy Jones is a swine veterinarian in Kinston and president of the American Swine Vets Association. He refutes the study. That amount of antibiotics are not being used in food production. Jones says hog farmers in North Carolina only give antibiotics to sick animals. The other farmers we interviewed say they do the same. If animals are sick, we have to treat them. And I think that gives the public a better product, a safer product. Jones says antibiotics are an important tool on the farm. As long as we use these technologies and medicines judiciously and properly, we are not harming the public. All the farmers we spoke with said they follow the proper withdrawal periods to make sure there is no antibiotic residue left in the meat by the time it goes to market. So the, by the time that someone is sitting down and having a turkey dinner, there should be no antibiotics in that turkey? Correct. And USDA will randomly check samples at the plant in the products to make sure that there are no residues in the meat. But Chad Campbell's discovery of antibiotics in beef shows the system isn't perfect for the overall food supply. That's not supposed to be in the meat. Safe food handling and proper cooking will eliminate antibiotic-resistant bacteria and some say any risk from antibiotic residue. I think many of these antibiotic chemicals will, will be degraded and they won't then, even if ingested, they won't perform their antibacterial effect. In the, in the human body. For 40 years, there's been research to try to see if there is antibiotic resistance transmitted from animals, the consumption of meat, to humans. And there has never been any conclusive evidence showing that. But there are other possible pathways for both antibiotics and antibiotic resistant bacteria to travel from the farm to the general population. Farm workers can carry resistant bacteria off the farm and antibiotics and animal waste can end up in the soil and water. There may be an association, but I'm not sure yet we can say there's a true cause and effect that the agricultural use is truly causative of the human uh, emergence of resistance. It may be a factor but I'm not sure we could say yet it's the main factor. Still, the rise in antibiotic resistant bacteria has doctors and scientists concerned enough to study all possible factors. One kind of resistant staph infection called MRSA kills about 18,000 Americans each year. That's more than the number who die of AIDS. Battling, you know, the fundamental mechanisms by which bacteria become resistant and then by, by which they spread and, and sort of transmit that resistance is challenging. There's, there's no doubt. And if it weren't, then we probably wouldn't be facing the, the problems that, that we're facing now and, you know, literally the end of, of antibiotic utility. An increasing number of scientists says there is a link between agricultural antibiotic use and antibiotic resistance. The Natural Resources Defense Council, the Center for Science and the Public Interest, the Food Animal Concerns Trust, the Union of Concerned Scientists, and Public Citizen are suing the FDA for not doing more to curb agricultural antibiotic use. The European Union has banned the use of human antibiotics on livestock and has seen a reduction in the numbers of antibiotic-resistant bacteria found in both animals and food. Is the concern overblown? I certainly think the concern is overblown from my standpoint. And, and you can say, well, I'm biased. Yes, I'm biased, but I see, see it every day and live and breathe it. And so I know what's happening in, you know, with the animals and I know what our procedures are. We would find a better way if we thought there was any issue uh, with the products we're producing. Okay, yeah, Victoria? Chad Campbell believes antibiotic-free yeah, is the better way. Eventually we might have a uh, antibiotic-resistant 
uh, pathogen that will be resistant to everything and we can't cure it. Next, the debate over going antibiotic free and whether the cost is too high for farmers and consumers. Would you rather have cheap meat or would you rather have like a chance of getting really sick and possibly uh, dying? More people are demanding antibiotic-free meat, and the market is responding, with more of it being offered at your local supermarket. But is it economically feasible to feed an entire nation without using antibiotics on the farm? Eric! They were here a while ago. Bailey Newton is a mostly Eric. organic farmer. They're in the, yeah, they're in the mud hole. Yeah. Eric! He has pasture-raised cows, hogs, and chickens on 80 acres in Bullock, North Carolina. These animals, these and all the rest of them, are raised in a natural environment. They get fresh air, sunshine, they're not confined in a placement where they smell ammonia all the time. Bailey takes some of the same steps as conventional farmers to avoid disease. Most visitors must either disinfect or wear protective clothing. I have very little, if any, problems with disease in any of my livestock. Even though he doesn't use antibiotics. Society frowns on that. The people that I market to, is that's a, one of the first questions they ask, do we use any antibiotics? Bailey didn't always raise animals this way. He used to have a more conventional confinement hog operation. You know, we had 800 to 1,000 hogs in a 6,000 square foot building and, and uh, it was just, uh, it was a nightmare because we were having to give antibiotics to keep them, the respiratory problems under control. We spend anywhere from 1000 to $1,500 a month in antibiotics and shots that we had to give those dogs. A lot of times it was given to the whole, whole uh, group, either through water or either, either through the feed. We also fed uh, a growth promoter, and it was just it, it was just a lot of work and all to to be given shots and all all the time, and it just it just didn't work good for me. So Bailey visited some small organic farms. I liked what they were doing. I liked the way the animals looked. They were happy animals. Uh, and they were healthy animals, and also. It began to become a, a thing of people looking for it. Demand for antibiotic-free and completely organic meat is increasing, but farmers like Whitley Stevenson aren't buying it. They are selling the idea that theirs is better and it's healthier and all, and in the bottom line is it's a market employee. I mean, um, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart, and they're not doing it out, uh, to save the world and to save the environment. They're green because it's a market employee. For a smaller niche market of people willing to pay more for organic meat. If they want an organic product, you know, those products are available. If a consumer wants uh, a nutritious uh, a product at a great price, those products are available also. As long as our country demands cheap food, they're going to have to have agriculture enterprises such as mine that are able to do it in volume, to do it efficiently, and, and to be cost effective in doing it in order to maintain a cheap food supply in the United States. Going organic is really not an option. Not for me, it's not. Why are you gonna play with something that you know that works for something that might not work? I mean, our resources are going down, but the population's going up, the demand for food's going up. Conventional farmers in our state say to keep production high enough to meet that demand, antibiotic use is a must. We have to use them. We want that tool available for us, and so we realize the importance of not overusing them. Those cattle move from paddock to paddock every day or as needed. Even Bailey Newton admits operations like his couldn't meet large-scale consumer demand. It would be very hard for everybody to go organic or, or grass-fed or, or pasture-raised to feed the nation. It would just be uh, almost impossible, I think. That's why you won't find Bailey's Meats at the supermarket, but rather a local farmer's market just on Saturdays. And I'm looking at a niche market, raising stuff that my customers want. It will take the vast majority of Americans wanting antibiotic-free meat to encourage the large-scale production required to bring the cost down for both farmers and consumers. 
Until then, we'll have to rely on our federal and local regulatory agencies and scientists to make sure antibiotic use on farms does not help create antibiotic-resistant superbugs that can harm or even kill us.